So, returned from planing the straight edge, the 36 inch Kingway HKA, which uh, designates, or is Richard's designation of the uh, straight edge with the dovetail cap pack capacity. Um, we did the angle weigh at 44 degrees so that we'll fit into a 45 degree dovetail also. Uh, did only the angle way and the flat, that was uh, uh, what we managed in 12 hours. Uh, I must say that is uh, mainly because we uh, was the first attempt running the machine, so we had a lot to learn. Uh, it came out very nice. I was surprised at the accuracy and the ease of operation. Um, <clears throat> As you can see, I blew it up, so it's high in the end. That was... Um, uh, probably could have been better with a little bit uh, stiffer setup, but on uh, the other hand, I think that's also then uh, very well within reason. It is uh, four to five hundreds bit down here, but most of it is three. So, uh, and the same at the dovetails uh, or the angle section, but less. It's a let's say one to two hundreds of a millimeter high here. It came out of then uh, with results uh, like this and uh, this is uh, the based on, the, on the, what we can say is learning by doing also. We, um, we initially fed the, the tool a little bit cautiously in but uh, at the end we took some two millimeter deep cuts with uh, half a millimeter down feed and the down where direction was like this so we we um so this way so um that meant that you have a surface like this but then to flatten that out we thought we'd try with the the flat side of the tool and then go 10 millimeter down manually uh, this didn't turn out particularly uh, successful but nonetheless these ridges as you can see I've just scraped them a little bit they are not high not not by much really if we take the, the gauge here and measure I see that they are three hundredths of a millimeter deep. So that's within reason and uh, no doubt that this can be dealt with uh, in a very, very short amount of scraping. As I said, we only took two sides, so I have to move down the other. I guess this side was, um, or on this side actually, the was some four millimeter um, down in comparison with the I mean the rough scale with everything so we had to take it uh, around uh, five millimeters down and uh, you can see a stripe here also which was the remain so uh, a little bit of problems or glitches with the um, with the down feed uh, so uh, was a little bit learning on the machine also how this behaved I think the, the automatic feed then stopped and then it just uh, polished a, a, uh, well, a thin line there. Very pleased. So then it's just a matter of scraping. I can verify the amount of uh, deviation from flatness with feeler gauges. Uh, we also tested then with um, with um, setting up with shims on the area points here, like uh, so and uh, so, of course equal shims, and then measured. The same, uh, let's say, happens. Uh, there is no difference in the in the reading. So, thanks to the design of the straight edge. This is stiff. But anyway, I've um, 
let's say it's it's four here just on one spot but mainly it was like three and two and zero of course and on the other side a little bit more like five and uh, I saw also on the, on the non plane surface now that this was following the same curve so this was actually a little bit high here and, and how to mount the straight edge for a scraping well I can be extremely pragmatic it won't go anywhere I'll leave it there. I think that would be my solution. Clamping it firmly. Yeah, and now, of course, the fun begins. I know that these ends are high. I know it's a little bit more deep here. So, um, more or less, um, the surface. Uh, like this with the most wear here let's call it four or five and then four and then three and then this is zero and up here is zero so what do we do since there is no point in having uh, this this in relation to the other side i can do what i want really and then what we learned is then to tip scrape it Namely to choose the, the side uh, where you have most contact and then tip it. And uh, by doing that, instead of, um, of uh, taking both sides down, you will then at least uh, then should be do, able to do it with a little, a little bit less scraping to tip the surface either way. And of course then selecting a blade which is uh, fairly wide and with um, with the uh, high radius so about 90 here should be okay and I uh, have to sharpen it so that will be just a little bit of cutting oil if you Gently back and forth. I can just polish the surface here also on the side. Should be good to go. Okay, so then just snug it up here. Select the long stroke, or at least a little bit longer. Okay, I guess that's good. And up the speed a little bit. And it's almost equal to the side, so it doesn't really matter which side I start at. So just um, do one. And really, I should do, I think I will do, take the whole surface down so I have scrape marks all over. And um, then just uh, take down the corners, maybe one cross stroke more. Cross stroke meaning like that. But at least so I have scrape marks all over. I use uh, roughing technique then, circles, with a 90 degree blade, with uh, quite long stroke or at least 
longer than, than when finishing and then quite high speed. Okay, good. Already starting to look good, so if we just get it on now. We get the point. So stripes are still there after one cross scrape or one that way and then the other and I took the end here down the further a little bit but um, they will soon be gone. As I said they are probably 300 deep so I've taken let's say one cross would be covering the whole surface in the depth I scrape so half a hundred maybe a hundred so I'll take five or six times more, this will go on, will be gone. And um, you already see the scrape marks and the structure that you will get. And yes, of course, for the observant uh, observer, uh, having the plate just behind here, if I then cover it up with blue, it's not a particularly good idea when I start when I scrape here. So either will I have to have some kind of cover here or move it to another place. In these initial stages, don't be afraid to just uh, wail away because uh, uh, I have uh, some cycles left, so to speak. There's no point in, in what Richard calls chicken scratching. Just um, go, what does he say, uh, go mad at it, be mad. So uh, rough strokes are rough strokes to get down to, to where you can pinpoint afterwards. And already after uh, three more passes, you see the surface is improving. So now, uh, almost coverage to the end, to the middle here. Meaning that if I say these um, passes I've done would have taken it down one to two hundreds, then that is the preciseness of the planing here. This side a little bit more. As so then also a bit of evidence by like that the stripes are gone here. Not here. So roughing with the biax also you can use the heavy sets and the heavy crosses, I mean, instead of going in circles of course. So <laughs> the intent being, of course, to cover, to take away the blue now at this stage, not to leave anything, uh, really. So, um, I tend to alternate, but actually favor the the circles. So, um, now I've taken six, seven passes. This will be my eighth pass. And uh, over on the other side, it uh, starts to... Uh, cover here also. So after four, six, twelve passes I have this print. So another angle. So 17 passes, starting to hit over again, plus, yeah, not sure how far I'm off, so I will measure now to 
assert myself that there is not too much left after I scraped it. Now I just want to use this now with the um, shims again. And wetting this clean, this clean, and then inverting this on here. It's not hanging on the ends anymore. So let's see. Try three then. Nope. Doesn't go under. So do we have two here? Yes, found. Two. This wants to go under, but only in some places. So I. The best guess now is that the surface is within one hundredth of a millimeter and uh, starting to feel actually a little bit like point wise high in the middle. So uh, good, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eighteen passes, and now it's football time, soccer time.